I'm Mary Sorge, I'm Michelle Belfontaine from CBC. Um, we've been asking a lot about vote tabulators, and uh, I see there's a report here that's going to council, I think it's next week? Yeah. Uh, $2.6 million additional costs. Um, so tell me a little bit about, I mean, you're dealing with all kinds of cost pressures. I mean, what effect will this have on the city's uh, budget process? You know, Edmontonians are already struggling with affordability crisis and the role of the government should be to avoid all the costs that we can reasonably avoid. And uh, the changes related to Bill 20, particularly prohibiting municipalities from using uh, tabulators, will add $2.6 million to the cost. And that will be directly paid by municipal property owners. That is not fair to them. This is a change that we never ask for, and this is a change that never should have been implemented. And now Edmontonians are going to pick up the bill, and I am very disappointed that we have to do that. Uh, I hope that if province insists that municipalities cannot use tabulators, they pay the cost. 2.6, just part of the $5.6 million that we are going to be paying for extra cost for the implementation of Bill 20, which was never required by, asked by municipalities, and never was needed by municipalities. Now, you, of course, you were a counselor well before you became mayor. Um, and I guess Edmonton's been using tabulators for a couple of decades. Is, is that, have you ever seen problems in Edmonton? Yeah. Well, Edmonton has been using tabulators for two decades. And our returning officer has full confidence that we never encountered any problems. And I have not heard any problems from uh, residents and voters during my time on municipal council as councillor and as mayor. So our system works, is efficient, is fast, it is cost effective. And adding $2.5 million, $2.6 million of added cost, we, need to, we should be avoiding that cost and it's unnecessary and un un unneeded. Yeah, so we welcome that change because we borrow uh, through the provincial agency. So any time there's a reduction in borrowing cost, we can translate that back into lower property taxes for uh, for Edmontonians and or, uh, you know, the cost of the projects come down. So it's a welcome change. But on the uh, province's refusal to pay taxes on municipal, sorry, province's refusal to pay property taxes on provincially owned buildings in Edmonton has resulted in close to $90 million of deferred revenue that province has not paid to the city. So they owe us $90 million. And the additional annual cost is close to $18 million. That's a huge amount of money that we have to collect from the rest of the property tax base in, in Edmonton. And that is not fair. People are struggling to pay their bills because of the affordability crisis. And as city council, you know, we are also struggling with uh, paying those bills. We have to generate revenue. And when province does not pay its fair share, then somebody has to pick up, someone else has to pick up the cost. You know, I appreciate that province is uh, open to discussions, but they have not delivered yet. So, in my mind, they need to back that their desire to listen by actions. And I have been asking for this change for two years. And every year, the amount accumulates. Every year, more burden is shifted onto, uh, onto Edmonton property taxes. So we need action. We needed, action that, uh, we needed that action two years ago. That hasn't happened. We, that, uh, we need that action now. You know, unfortunately, over the last number of months, we have seen Edmonton's unhoused population increase. 
uh, encampments are not the way to support uh, struggling Edmontonians. We need more homes. We need more detox facilities. We need more, uh, uh, you know, intervention in the form of mental health in uh, and the addictions recovery. Uh, and we need more permanently funded supportive housing units where wraparound services are available. Uh, we will be talking to our administration about the readiness for uh, for the winter response. And I also heard from um, uh, 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 people who serve on house population in the city that aggressive enforcement and aggressive, uh, uh, the I would say clearing of the encampments without consideration for the most vulnerable population had its implications. We have seen um, frostbites go up. We have seen amputations go up. So we need to make sure that those who are unwilling or unable to go to a shelter for various reasons, how do we support them? I think that's where we need to have conversation with the province and, the, and, and our administration. Do you have any concerns of starting any new infrastructure projects after seeing what Calgary has gone through with the Green Line, with the province pulling funding after saying that they were going to help fund the Green Line for a certain part, but now it seems like they're not going to. While you're working away on any new infrastructure projects that you're working with the province, do you have concerns that they may just pull it unilaterally? Well, we have a huge infrastructure renewal deficit, and our population is also growing, so we need to build new infrastructure to manage that growth and uh, facilitate that growth. So we will continue to build the infrastructure necessary. The challenge we are facing, I think this challenge is not just new, any uh, particularly to admit, remember every municipality in Alberta is facing the challenge that what, promise, what province promised to deliver for infrastructure has not been delivered. It has been $400 million less for the city of Edmonton than what was promised in 2008 and 2009. So that is equivalent to 2.5% property tax increases that we are collecting from property owners to pay for the failed promise of the, uh, of the, of the provincial government. You heard from the Premier today that population growth is bringing hundreds of million dollars in income taxes to the province. But none of that is coming to municipalities. But we are the one who are responsible for building roads, maintaining bridges, putting more bus service uh, into, the, into the system, building more recreational facilities, cultural facilities, playgrounds, maintaining green spaces that are necessary for people to uh, have a good quality of life. Yes, province is responsible for schools and hospitals. I'm glad they're stepping up on, on schools. That is their responsibility. But municipalities are also responsible to build infrastructure to come out their, that growth. That is where we're struggling. So the promises that were made would have not been delivered. So final question, and it's about some of the small town mayors that I was speaking to, and I alluded to the question to Mayor Gandam already, but they think that a lot of the funding that LGFF or even provincial funding goes directly to yourself or Mayor Gondek in the city of Calgary. They're struggling as well. Should you not be sharing the wealth and helping all municipalities instead of just helping the big cities? Oh, absolutely. We always stand together as a municipality to ensure that every municipality is getting the support that they need from uh, provincial government as well as from the from the federal government. We never pit one municipality against the other. That is not the right approach. Everyone has negatively been impacted by the reduction in infrastructure support from the province, from small cities to uh, you know, mid-sized cities to big cities to small towns. And everyone is raising property taxes to pay for that shortfall. So everyone is being negatively impacted, and all of us need to continue to work together that everyone is have necessary support from the government of Alberta.